Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to uh, AAMA's Member Connect webinar series. Uh, we're going to be waiting for a few folks to join us, uh, and, uh, more folks to join us, and as soon as we get that, uh, that number up, we'll, uh, we'll begin the seminar or the webinar. Well, let's get started. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us for our eighth AAMA Member Connect webinar in our COVID-19 Road to Recovery series. We're calling this week's We're Open and here's what it looks like. My name is Pete Gustafson. I'm the Executive Vice President for AAMA and I'll be the moderator for this conversation. Today's program will begin with an introduction of our two special guests followed by presentations they've prepared demonstrating the remarkable steps they've taken to ensure their facilities are safe and healthy environments for their team members and guests. After their presentations, our panelists will answer as many of your questions as we have time for. You can pose your questions by typing them into the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. You may begin to do so now and throughout today's program. If you are unable, if we are unable to get to your question, we will do our best to provide an answer in the recap email you'll all be receiving after the webinar. And now let me introduce Elizabeth Rizzuto. Elizabeth's impressive entertainment industry career has included a number of leading pos leadership positions, including marketing management, sales, customer relationship management, and email and social media marketing. She's working at Extreme Action Park today, where she's currently the director of marketing. Extreme Action Park happened to be the winner of the 2018 AAMA FEC of the year. This remarkable FEC started in 2004 as Extreme Indoor Karting, which originally had four attractions, an indoor go-kart, an arcade, a mini golf course, and a sports bar. Today, it offers an expansive variety of exciting attractions and event space with more than 200,000 square feet under roof. Attractions include indoor go-kart racing, 10-pin bowling lanes, a large arcade, overhead ropes courses, trampoline park, roller skating rink, escape rooms, laser tag, and virtual reality. Their food and beverage choices include the All-American Cafe, Ice Cream Shake Shop, and the Full Liquor Pit Bar. Elizabeth joined the team in 2011 as their marketing director and has been instrumental in the redesign and build out of what is now the largest indoor standalone FEC in Florida. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Elizabeth, to tell us what she's got going on down at, uh, at, uh, at Extreme Action Park in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Welcome, Elizabeth. Hi, Pete. Thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm, I'm very excited to share what we've done here. Um, we, we've got quite a venue, as you mentioned, over 200,000 square feet. Um, if we go ahead, I, I have a presentation here. Tina, thank you so much. Um, let's go ahead and scroll to the next screen. So here is a great visual to kind of help you understand how we put all of those amazing attractions under one roof. Um, we have a go-kart track uh, that uh, takes up over 50,000 square feet, um, a roller skating rink, uh, the escape rooms, as you can see, and bowling, um, just so many great attractions. And with this is a, a huge space. We have very high ceilings, you know, 30 foot high uh, ceilings, but it's all indoors. Um, just a beautiful open space that we've built this amazing, amazing park. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. So now how do we fill this park <laughs> with proper signage to handle COVID-19? Um, so basically it starts with signage, right? How do we get the guest's attention? How do we, um, how do we, how do we tell them all the right things that they need to be doing? So we started with this great idea, and as marketing, I love these signs. Um, we made them fun, we made them friendly, we made them um, yellow, so they stood out. Um, as you'll see in this presentation, there's more pictures of the inside of the park to give you a better understanding of what we have. Um, but you'll see there's you know polished concrete floors and bright colors and different color lights, so this yellow really, really stood out um, and, and helped to guide and, and direct guests uh, with all the things that we're offering and that we're doing to help help them. So um, as you can see, we have 
our distancing reminder or hand sanitizing and the and the options for you know helmets they could purchase their own race helmets and so on tina the next slide thank you um here is an example of some of the signs in action um you know wash your hands again the hand sanitizer stations so this was very important you know we needed to start with a message we needed to start with with all of the proper things to put in place to get people uh, prepared for play at the park. Um, you know, please continue. <laughs> Thank you. Um, another big aspect of how we planned our reopening uh, was to um, be very transparent. Um, it's important that not only the signs, but our messaging. We wanted to tell people exactly what we were doing. Um, more so than ever. We were having a discussion earlier about how, you know, before we were clean, we, we've always been clean. Our top reviews have been, you know, a clean, open, you know, bright venue. And now, you know, we, we had our porters and we had our cleaners and kind of in the background. We didn't want to interrupt your playtime with our cleaning, right? So we, we were always a clean venue, but now we're going to bring these people forward. We're going to make them stand out. So we wanted to tell you and show you exactly this is what we're doing this is how we are keeping you safe and the motto is clean safe fun and this is just a snapshot of what we've done just to outline and show everyone and we put this message out and this link out uh to everyone in all of our messaging and all of our emails and all of our social posts um you know, clean, safe, fun, and this is how we're going to do it. And this is how we're going to do it together. And this is how we're going to keep each other healthy and safe. So there's everything from, you know, what the CDC requires, along with um, the signage that we'll have in place in the park, along with the rules about you must wear your face mask while indoors. Um, not to mention the fact that we did put our team through extensive training. Uh, we had the restaurant compliance uh, Solutions. They did a, a special COVID training with our with our our kitchen and cafe staff. Um, you know, we have designated areas and 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 so on. So all of this was forward facing, right on our website. Everyone could see it. Um, like you know, laid out exactly as it needed to be. Next slide, please. Next one. Um, and then we made a video. Now this, this slide doesn't show the video, but it is on our website. Um, but basically we interviewed a lot of our key team members and we asked them to share with the public exactly what we're doing. Um, again, just being very transparent, open, and matter of fact that this is, this is how we're working together and these are the steps that we're taking. Next slide, please, thank you. So now we started with um, opening. So we decided to open the park on June 3rd. Um, we had followed the, guide, the steps that we needed to open in the state of Florida, which involved submitting a safety plan. So basically everything you saw on the website, we, um, we put in a, in a plan and a format, and we sent that directly you know, to the mayor and to our city officials. We have a, a fortunate to have a very good relationship with our city um, and worked with them hand in hand on developing a lot of this and everything that we needed to do. So with that, um, June 3rd was our opening date and we started with just go-karting and roller skating, which happens to be our two most popular attractions. Um, we did not open the arcade right away. Uh, we wanted to kind of get started to see how things would go. Um, and so the go-karting and the, and the roller skating were the first. And we wanted to kind of start with how were we welcoming guests into the park? And with that became this new redirection program. So the way the park is designed, there is one main entrance in and multiple exits out. Um, so like many other attractions, you have to find your route. How do you want to welcome guests in and how do you want to have them exit? And this is very important because if you are on limited capacity, like most of us are, how are you gonna know how many people are coming in and coming out? So this redirection was very important. Um, Hence, we brought in a lot of our, our barriers and stationed them just so in front of our counter space. Um, we were able to control the flow of guests. Um, and what we found is this actually not only 
helped direct for that capacity count, but it also offered amazing guest services. Um, by having that person out that front, which again, we've had, but now you can't avoid because they're directly in front of you. They are there saying, welcome back. We're so happy you came to visit us today. You know, it, it's, it's so nice to welcome our, guest, our guests back directly. In fact, we use some of that video and put it on our social sites. I remember on our very first day, we, we broadcasted, you know, welcome back our, our 200th customer. And everybody cheered and, and clapped and he was just so happy with his helmet just to go racing again. So it was really quite fun um, to have a fun day bringing back our guests, showing them what we've done, you know, directing them the way that they needed to go. So, because even if they came and they were, you know, regulars, they needed to learn this new direction as well. So we found that that was very important to have that extra touch point of them coming into the park. Um, it also helped, believe it or not, increase sales because now we're directing them straight to where they need to go to make that purchase to come into the park, which actually gave us a higher um, sales per person, uh, which was really nice to see as well. And when you have a limited capacity from a, a business perspective, that's important. Um, but it really, I think it, it, it's what attributed to all of the great feedback we've been receiving from guests. Um, let's go to the next one. And here's our clean team. So our clean team is, um, is again, where I mentioned before, you know, we've always been a clean park. We've always had great positive reviews about cleaning. Um, and, and we've always kept that cleaning crew kind of, you know, in the background, not interrupting your play. But now you want to see them. You know that, yes, that kiosk or that, or that countertop is clean. That table is clean for you. But unless you see it clean for you, you kind of question it now, right? Everybody does. So with this, we brought our cleaning team forward. We put the best, we put the clean team signage on them, and we basically said, hey, we're here to help. And they are equipped with their spray bottle and their paper towels, and they are there on site to help wipe down any machine, to help wipe down your table, um, to offer extra assistance whenever anybody requests it. And, and it's been wonderful. Uh, the clean team is not only our existing cleaning crew, but they're actually key members in each one of our attraction areas um, that don the vest for the day and, and help guests make feel, you know, feel comfortable about asking for an extra cleaning here and there. So works out really, really well. I highly recommend this. Next slide. Training. So how do we get the staff together to learn the new methods and what we're doing. It's hands-on training. So of course planning for a reopening. Now we've got this cleaning crew. Now we have these new redirection as far as entering and exiting the park. Now we have all of this new information coming to us constantly. Um, as many of you know and are experiencing, things change every day. So being fluid, being receptive is so important. So making sure that as these changes occur and as people you know, as we make decisions or, or, or move things around, you, you, communication, right? It's always communication with your team. So we started implementing not only on the pre-opening days, our training, where we as team members experienced every activity and attraction as a guest to help with the flow, to help design how would we welcome guests in each area, which I'm going to show you as well. But we also implemented our, our morning huddle and our evening huddle. And this was, this was actually something new for us um, with having so many team members at one time coming in different shifts, different times of the day. Um, we reduced a lot of our hours and our days because we had a reduced amount of team members and that allowed us to bring out this huddle. And it's actually been really great. Uh, we announce our positive reviews we share updates for the process and the systems. Um, we offer suggestions. You know, we open the floor to ask team members how they feel. Um, what could we do to make things better? What changes could we try? Um, what can we do to improve the guest experience? Um, so it's really been great for team building as well as training. Next slide, please. 
And then that, of course, when you have a happy team leads to excellent customer service. So this team that we have, we know is, is stronger than ever. Um, these are just some of our, our team members just, you know, embracing all of the changes. As you can see, you know, we've had to put up the sneeze guards. We've got signage for register numbers, you know, just to keep everything orderly. We've got, you know, the new entrance and just that constantly cleaning, always be cleaning, we call it ABCs, always be cleaning. So next, next slide. So we're fortunate um, as a as a SEC to already have established um, kiosk system. So we developed this probably two years ago, where guests can self service. Um, they can register and pay. You know, in the go kart industry um, or FEC and other attractions, there's a waiver system. Some of you, you know, I'm sure most of you know that. And in the waiver system, guests will have to most likely go up to a computer where they register their, their age and, and information and sign our waiver. Um, so it's always been somewhat electronic. And then they go, most of the time, they go to a ticketing counter to then make their purchase. So we actually developed these custom kiosks for our park that allow a guest to not only register, but also to pay. Uh, so having these in the park have been truly beneficial um, because, again, it's for those guests that want a completely, um, you know, touchless system, they can they can do this. And as you can see in some of the images, you know, on the top left, we have one of our team members there kind of overseeing to be there to answer any questions. But also, as soon as a guest leaves that kiosk, she simply wipes it down, wipes all the touch points down, and prepares it for the next guest. Um, we started, interesting note, the picture on the bottom left is where we started with just doing the yellow markings to separate guests. And we had a lot more guests than we anticipated uh, on our opening. So we needed full use of all of our kiosks. We originally had only maybe two at a time on a, on a, on a rack here. So the picture on the right is the most recent where we developed, and I know it might be hard to see, but we developed these um, sneeze guard shields in between the kiosks. So now um, guests can separate themselves, but let's say it's a mother with, you know, with a few kids, she can use multiple screens or if it's just singular. So basically it just helped allowing us to use all of the kiosks at once and we weren't just limiting to just a couple on a bank. So um, that was an improvement, again, that we made as we went uh, to, to, help, to help the guest and the experience. So things like that you'll find unique to your to your FEC. Next, please. Okay, so now we're going to go into each of the attractions, and I'm going to try and move this along because I know I could talk forever about this. But um, here we have the racetrack, and these are some of the things that we implemented at the track. So every attraction, and I kind of included it on the slideshow, and I, and I believe this should be available um, after the webinar. But basically, we put all of that information that we had on the website, all of those details of everything that we're doing in each of the attractions to help you, we actually included that in signage at the entrance of every attraction. So again, if they missed it online, they can see it in the park. Being very transparent, being very open, this is what we're doing. And again, a lot of it, we already do, but it's still putting it out there and making it open for them to see, and they really appreciate that. So as you can see, we've got, we're cleaning the go-karts in between the heats. We've got proper signage. We've got sneeze guards to, you know, for the team members and the guests. Um, next slide, please, Tina. And then this is in our briefing room. We've limited um, how many people could be in the briefing room at a time uh, and that it was registered drivers only because, you know, sometimes you'll get families in there, but really the only people that need to be in there are those that are getting their helmets. Um, and you can see where we've cle clearly indicated which head um, helmets are clean and ready to be used and which ones were used. Um, I'm not sure I had a picture there, but outside when they exit the go-kart, they actually put their helmet on a separate rack away, not even in the same room, to be sanitized and clean before it's placed into the clean room. So we really, really were uh, particular about how we would keep these things you know, separated 
That system that the helmets sit on is actually a vacuum system. Um, it was custom made for the park, where when the helmet sits on it, there's a vacuum that's sucking, you know, any odors or drying any anything, any part of the inside and pulling it out of the helmet. So it's actually a vacuum sucking it out. So it's, you know, again, they're sanitized, sprayed, cleaned, and then placed back on that rack. And it, it works well. People appreciate it. Next slide, please. Skating, another area where we have rental skates um, or a rental item. So here we implemented the sneeze guards across the counters. Um, we have an area clearly defined that these are where the clean skates are. And then on the other side, we have an area that says return used skates here. So keeping our used skates from our clean skates to make sure that everyone is properly sanitized. Um, and prepared for the next for the next user. Next slide. And escape rooms. So again, we opened go karting, roller skating, and then we opened our escape rooms. So we're fortunate that our escape rooms have their own entrance, um, and this made it actually easy for us to open the escape rooms in a way that guests of the escape rooms would not have to flow into the park. So we could control the capacity of the escape rooms and we could open up what we called private rooms. So normally when you book an escape room that could potentially hold up to 10 guests, you know, two couples may enter the room and you're in with people that you don't know. So amidst this, we, we found a way to to change that. So now we changed our pricing and we decided to, instead of doing an individual per person price, we opened up a group price. So you can book an entire escape room for up to six players. Um, and that was a flat price. So a family of four, a group of six, um, a couple even if they just wanted to rent the room for themselves, they could do that. And what we did is they actually would call when they arrived and then our escape room manager would let them into the space. So only one family or group at a time would be in the actual space. And then they're escorted to their room. And then everything was cleaned. And then the next group could come in, escorted to their room. And then once, you know, it was staggered. So then the next room would be done. They would come out and they would leave. So basically you would be in that space, just you and your trusted family or friends. So that worked out very well. Um, people really enjoy it. They definitely like the one room flat price. And, um, and we were able to control it. We were able to control capacity and we were able to stay on top of the cleaning that was necessary, the above and beyond cleaning. Um, we have foggers, we, we use the electrostatic fogging machine. So I don't know if you're familiar with escape rooms, but there's a lot of touch points. So we use that in between as well. So um, it was a great way to run it, a great way to control it, and uh, guests really enjoy it. Five-star reviews across the board. Everyone loves to attend escape rooms here. So, next slide, please. Laser tag. So, again, this just shows more ways that we help uh, separate guests. We have a queue line, and then you can see from the photos, you know, cleaning that vest and those electronic equipment. Uh, there's a lot of mechanical to it, electrical to it. So how do you clean it? Uh, those foggers are amazing. Um, basically, guests will be suited up in a clean vest. And then when they come out, they'll put their used vest on a table where our, um, where our team member will go ahead and spray them down and then put them on the rack. Now, we've also limited capacity here. So that allows more rotation uh, so that as the vests are, you know, sanitized and drying, you know, we have, we don't, we're not using all of them at once. So we are limiting capacity in that area as well, which allows for more clean time in between. Next slide, please. Same thing with dark ride. I don't know if any of you guys have XD dark ride, uh, but this is, you've got the seats, you've got your shooting device and you have your 3D glasses. So again, limiting capacity for this, we have ours is eight seats. So we only allow a family or a friend's group to go in. 
Um, if it's two couples, we might allow it where they go one end to the other end, keeping social distance apart. Um, but again, we've got a, a basket where at the end of the show, our team member will collect the glasses, clean them, and prepare them for the next, for the next ride. Next slide. Virtual reality, same thing. Now this one is interesting because you're putting a face mask on. Um, but it, and you have to be so careful with cleaning these components, as many of you know. Um, they're very delicate, they're very expensive. So we wanna take extra care and precaution in cleaning these. So these are cleaned by a team member in between use of each attendee. Again, we have queue lines outside. We limit how many people come in and out. Our VR, we have four in each, so we have eight total. So we have four in one pod and four in another. Um, and you know, we ask guests, please be patient. You know, please be understanding. Yes, it may take a little longer, but we assure you we're, we're making sure everything's ready for you. Next slide. And the arcade. So this was an adventure and our arcade team, our arcade manager, Jerry and his team and Mark, they just, they, they worked so hard to prepare. So the arcade floor is the whole expanse of the bottom, you know, the ground level, right? The second level is our rope course. So the arcade floor, when we decided to open the arcade, we had to space all the games out. And they just came up with such genius ideas on how to do this. So one of these photos, if you look at the one in the middle, they're, they're literally standing arms apart to make sure, and they're moving the ski ball machines, fanning them out so that they could allow players to play, but still remain six feet apart. Um, they did this a, with a lot of the games, and we we're fortunate because we've got all this amazing indoor space to work with that we even found, if you look at the photo at the bottom, we found 2,500 more square feet of park space and we moved a lot of the sports games to that area. And as you can see, we've spaced them all about. So normally that bank of, of basketball machines would be right next to each other. He spread them all out, um, taking them off the main floor, spread all the games apart. Um, so everything uh, was you know, distanced. And on top of that, we created these little cards. If you see on the top right, this is game pause, this machine not available. So this kind of was a, a sign that we put like on a flap. So for some of the machines that couldn't be moved, uh, we would pause the games in between, but let's say we were finding families that would come in. So if it was, um, you know, a couple and they wanted to play next to each other, they still can. You know, we have a lot of game tacks around on the floor and they would help. They could be next to each other if they're the same family unit um and not have to be so far apart so we we find ourselves you know with that customer service accommodating some guests as they you know requested um by putting the signs on there but also be allowing them to flip up in the event that we had couples that wanted to play together or groups that wanted to play together so they really made it flexible uh for the guests to make that decision but again following you know the six feet apart for the majority of the games and it's, um, it's amazing what they've done. It's beautiful. And next slide, please. The redemption store. This one was tricky because there's so many things in there that people could touch. So we offered one way in, one way out. Uh, we limited one family or group at a time. And we made it very clear that if you're touching it, you're buying it. So <laughs> we tried to limit how many are in there so we could control it. and. Uh, those electrostatic cleaners are amazing in the event. Um, you know, people touch more than they need to, but we really uh, keep this area under control. Evan, our, our redemption manager, he does an incredible job in there. And you'll see in some of the reviews, they just, they just love his, his customer service. Um, it's just, again, being patient. I think the sign even says that. Thank you for your patience. Um, and, and most guests are, believe it or not. I think they're all understanding of the situation. And as long as we're, you know, clear to them, they're re responsive to that. So next slide, please. And then here's our ropes course. Again, this was the last thing we opened. A guests above other guests, um, face masks are required, gloves are required to play on the ropes course. Um, 
and this is doing very well. We just opened the ropes course this past week and it's been very successful. Next slide. I know I'm talking a lot, so I want to speed it up. Bowling, uh, we have six lanes and we uh, basically have little groups. So if you see one, two, three, four, five, six, so we made those five and six, one unit, three, four, one unit, one, two, one unit. So we reduced the capacity to 50%, but still allowed people to be socially distant while on there. Next slide, please. And this is the cafe. So again, we used our wonderful kiosks uh, to help with the limited menu that we had. We kind of did like box menu and box lunches uh, type of options and people could go ahead and order and they would give their cell phone and instead of using a buzzer, because again, everyone touches a buzzer, we don't want that. Um, they would give their cell phone number and we would text them when their food was ready. Um, but the kiosks, have been great, but we still have the guest services counter for those that want to talk to somebody, um, again, with the sneeze guards and uh, keeping it as touchless as possible. And then this was really fun. Um, table is available, uh, is unavailable, and table is clean. This was a great way to show that we're cleaning. So again, having those team members in those vests forward facing cleaning the table is great, but unless you see it, you don't believe it. But these markers kind of help with that, right? So you put the marker on the table. Hey, this is ready for you. It's been cleaned. And then our team member will go and, you know, if it's been flipped, they will go back and clean it and flip it again. So um, this has been really, this has been really great. Um, and our tables, as you can see, are already kind of socially distant, you know, but you could still, we, we reduced the chairs in the cafe. We took more than half of them away. I think if there's less places to sit, there's less places to gather. And that was an important thing to see. Next, next slide. And the bar. So um, some of you may have heard Florida has closed their bars, um, but our bars are, are open and have been allowed to be open because we have a restaurant. However, we have not allowed anyone to congregate at the bar. Uh, we had this really great idea to use the Rat Pack instead. Um, we had uh, D. Martin here who decides to sit at our bar um, and he kind of blocks people from joining. But uh, basically what that means is you can order your drinks at the bar, hence the sneeze guards and the signage, but then you're taking your drink back to your table where you're socially distant from other guests. Um, but we didn't want it to feel, you know, an empty bar is so inviting, you want to go up to it. So that's why we put the rat pack there to kind of help keep people away from it, so to speak. Um, it's kind of fun walking through the park because you think someone's at the bar, but they're not. <laughs> Next slide, please. Okay, so we opened uh, June 3rd. Amazing, amazing response from the community. Um, we had 2,300 people the first week that we opened um, and tons of positive reviews. We got, you know, a wonderful article written up in our local paper. Replay uh, did a piece on uh, our opening as well. And this is just some of what it looked like. Next photo or next slide. And then our reviews. So, so how do you know how you're doing, right? How, how, how do you know everything you're doing is working? Well, repeat customers, um, great attendance, more than we anticipated. And these amazing reviews, I mean, we actually asked, of course, let us know how, how was your experience because we want to know. And having those extra touch points at the entrance and again at the exit because we need someone at every exit to make sure that we're, you know, thanking the guests for their visit, I think really added to that. And then we get these amazing reviews. So I have two pages here <laughs> just showing, you know, this one just every day, all different days of how wonderful it was, how they experienced, you know, the park in a new way, how they felt safe, how clean it was. And uh, this has really, really been great feedback for us and for our team to know that we're doing the right thing. Um, everyone that's coming is having a great time. So, so thank you. Sorry if I took too long, but there was a lot to cover. It's a big park. <laughs> thanks, Pete. Oh, thanks so much. That was wonderful, Elizabeth. It's uh, pretty obvious why you uh, were voted the uh, one. <laughs> AAMA FEC of the year in 2018. Well done. Really glad to see that. Thank you. Um, we're going to get back to you later on with some questions that are coming in, but uh, right now I'm going to turn it over to Darren DeRoche. A quick introduction. 
Darren DeRoche and I have known each other for quite a few years, uh, since the time I was back at Sega trying to sell games to him. Uh, he currently serves as the Chief Operating Officer at GameWorks, a position he assumed in March 2018, after holding various managerial roles of progressively greater responsibility since joining the company more than 15 years ago. Um, Darren has over 35 years of hospitality experience, having worked in a variety of roles at JBC Entertainment, a food and entertainment operator at family entertainment centers across the U.S. He was also the general manager at Jillian's flagship in San Francisco, and he began his career as a founding partner of La Costa Restaurant Corporation, a Canadian-based Mediterranean casual fine dining concept. GameWorks currently operates seven unique locations in seven different states from Seattle, Washington to Norfolk, Virginia. Each is slightly different with a large variety of indoor attractions, including 10 pin bowling, arcade games, laser tag, VR, eSports, and the Works Kitchen, featuring a chef-driven menu with craft cocktails and beer. GameWorks is an official partner with the high school eSports league. Through this partnership, they're harnessing students' passions for video games <clears throat> to organize competition and academics, resulting in better engagement, better GPAs, and better career prospects. Together, they're helping to make esports available to every student as a legitimate varsity level sport in high schools across the country. And with that, I want to welcome my friend David Laroche to give us a presentation on what GameWorks has going on as they start to reopen their facilities across the country. Take it away, Darren. Thank you, Pete. Good morning. And Elizabeth, well done. Tough act to follow. Uh, well done for your presentation. Um, and uh, again, thank you, Pete, for having me this morning. If we can move to the next slide, please. So, when we started all this, I mean, obviously very unprecedented times for all of us. And uh, we, a um, couple of our objectives that we really kind of focused on here was safe return of our team and of our guests and then an employee confidence and our guest confidence as well. And a lot of things that we did here was really about, um, and again, as I touched on these as well, as being transparent with our, with our teammates, um, being, you know, and you'll see later on the slide that we're, we're, we're doing expectation setting with our guests, you know, as they walk up to the building. So everything is crystal clear when they walk in. And really with our team, a lot of it here was just, you know, the, um, the coaching and the nurturing that they need, uh, that they, you know, they, they all have homes that they go to, but they work and spend a lot of time with us. And a lot of them are younger and even a lot of our salaried and most experienced folks. Um, there was a lot of coaching that we, we put, uh, spent some time on here and as uh, deeper into the presentation and we have a much larger presentation that we distributed to everybody, we talked about things uh, that they could do to help them weather the storm here. Um, the safe return of our guests for us was obviously very important and it's for all of us and for our industry. A, we want to be a role model and example for, for other industries out there, but we got hit really hard, all of us did. And, um, you know, there was a very bleak outlook. And, you know, as we hear news today, we still are wondering and scratching our heads, where is this going to go and, and how will we, uh, we recover from it? And, uh, and the safe return of our guests was very, very important. And that dovetailed into the confidence of both um, our, our teammates, our employees, our internal guests, and then obviously our external guests. We wanted them to build the confidence that when they came into one of our locations, that they felt safe okay. and fun. And it was a fun place for them to uh, to be. We we spent a lot of time talking about you know flattening the curve and what's guiding us, and really what that is is really about we want to keep things as normal as possible uh, for our for our guests. We want to give them some joy uh, after being locked up for long periods of isolation. Uh, we want to give them a place where they can come, let their hair down, do what they need to do, spend some family time together, and and uh, and have some fun in, in a game works location. So tips for our team, you know, we talked to them about how they can, you know, promote healthy habits from, from um, you know, great hand washing to their own personal diets. We talked about health and personal hygiene. We talked about cleaning tips for home. And then we talked about financial health. You know, a lot of our, our service staff who live on tips, um, as we all know, spend it as soon as they get it. And, and many others do. And we were talking about, you know, cut some of these things out and make coffee at home versus going out, you know, all these different things to save a little bit of money to really help them. And then we spent a lot of time on talking to our team of what they can expect in the, when they return. And that was kind of all the, the, the various elements of, of going through, especially our management teams, because they were going to bring it down to our hourly teams and going through the various training um, aspects that we, we put up. And really, um, even as Elizabeth touched on with huddles, it's the pre-shift. You know, we were, we're doing those lots, going through them 
I'm making sure everyone's really understanding that uh, everything is, uh, you know, that we have to take the stuff seriously. And that also if there's questions, if they have any concerns to, to raise them and we can talk about them. And then a health declaration. And this was something that we felt was very important, not only for our team and for our vendors. If you go to the next slide, please. Uh, we put a health declaration together, and this is, a, this is an example of it here, um, that everyone who comes into our building, staff and vendors, they, they all come through one entry point. Um, they get asked these questions, and then we, we record their information, even, we have, even though we have it, and we have them sign it. Uh, we take their temperature uh, with the contactless uh, thermometers. Um, everyone has to be wearing uh, masks and gloves. If they don't, we give them to them right there at the door when they walk in. And we, they're asked these questions and then we have it there in Spanish for our, for our kitchen team. And we've done this with our vendors as well. We've reached out to our vendors and said, hey, when you come to our locations, this is where you have to deliver. So if you were in a bad habit of coming in another door or trying to come in the front, this is the door you need to come in. Um, and this is what your drivers or your salespeople can expect when they come to a GameWorks location. And, and so... So far, it's been fantastic. Uh, we haven't had any pushback, and this has actually helped us where someone did come uh, and report for duty, and they did uh, actually uh, say to us before they even entered the space, because it was out in the hallway, they said, hey, listen, we, uh, I, was, I think I was exposed to somebody through, uh, through a third party by my girlfriend through her family, and this and this happened, so we, um, we sent that person back home. We, uh, and what we're doing, if someone says that or comes up with that, our protocol is, is to um, ensure that uh, they understand uh, that person goes home, is quarantined for 14 days. We have their name and information. We report them to the local health authorities, just as you know, being a good citizen and, and, and all of our team is aware of that. And then uh, anywhere where they were, they, we clean and sterilize the area. Um, if it was something that happened after the fact, then our protocol calls for us to shut down for a period of time to, to clean, sanitize, and, and do what's needed to, to, to restart again. Next slide, please. And then part of our team, every one of our team that comes through, they'll sign off on this, and you'll see the five different uh, uh, documents that they're signing off on. They get a copy of this blueprint for recovery. We have a sanitation policy. We have a social distancing protocol. We have a pre uh, COVID pre-opening checklist and then our operating procedures are, um, with, these are special ones in addition to our normal procedures. And these five documents are something that when our teams come back, they spend, you know, it's about two hours, they go through it in detail. Um, if I'm not there uh, in person, then we'll, uh, we have a video call or a phone call to discuss them if there's any questions and go through them and some things get to be tailored to, every, to each individual location by state. But we get everyone to sign off on these just so that everyone's got a thorough understanding and, and some, nobody can say they didn't know, but really it's about being a good corporate citizen and just being good, good people and good to one another that everyone fully understands what we're getting into. Next slide, please. Our signage, um, as with Elizabeth, we felt yellow was very good. It, it stands out and all the bright, colorful lights and walls and everything that, that we have, um, it, it stands out there. We, made the, we tried to make them as fun as possible uh, where we could, but also be very, very clear in our messaging. We felt it you know, uh, to be very high impact. Uh, we over communicate, uh, especially on the entry points when people walk in. And we did a lot in print and digital. So. Uh, we spent a mountain of uh, dollars on, on, on printed signs and on, on TVs and on computer screens or where we can. We've added all these things rotate uh, through, uh, through our digital signage packages uh, to, to really communicate uh, what's going on inside the four walls. Next slide, please. Continue more signage. Um, the, big, uh, the, the big sign that you see on the right there. And that's plastered on our doors. There's a whole wall of them as people walk up, big stop sign. Um, we are requiring everyone, doesn't matter what state we're in, we're requiring everyone who enters our, our facility to have face masks on. Uh, we, to be honest, we have had some pushback on it. Uh, we have masks available and we just pass that cost on to our guests. We're not trying to make money off it. Uh, we're, just, we're just passing it on. Um, we've been in a, two states where we're open uh, currently. One has been no problem. Uh, the other state, had, we've had some pushback, but once we explain it to people, we give them their options. And if they, if they don't want to do it, we politely invite them to, you know, to come back at another time where we can, if they don't want to buy a face mask from us for, for two bucks, uh, then we point them to where, you know, in one mall that we're in, where they can go buy a mask for five bucks and, and, and make the decision um, themselves. But with our teams all being required to wear masks and gloves, um, we, we found that making sure that all of our guests coming in 
uh, wearing masks was uh, was an important feature for us. And uh, I expect a little bit more pushback, but as things are starting to roll along here, I think people and people are becoming more comfortable with it. And then again, a lot of focus on washing hands. Next slide, please. A couple other things that we really kind of looked at here was the guest friction points. Uh, we tried to get into, uh, and, we're, and we're getting into some, some contactless solutions. Uh, we went to our very limited menu and we did a QR code online menus. I put one up there in the top right corner. You can actually scan that at some point in time and it will take you to a menu. Um, it's all web-based so they don't have to download an app on their phone because app space on people's phones is, uh, you know, that real estate is, is always challenging to get at. But people can come in here, they can see a drink menu, they can see a bunch of other things, what's happening on our eSport. And I put some slide pictures uh, down on the bottom left there for you. So we found that to be very, very helpful. Uh, contactless credit card payments. Uh, we're, you know, making sure that we're really pointing that out and we're, people are using that an awful lot, trying to cut down the contact between cash and physically handling cards. Um, and as you'll see in the pictures down below, um, you know, promoting the, the game card kiosk sales. And then at the, at the game card counter and redemption areas, um, anywhere we sell game cards, again, the contactless payment solutions. Uh, we have the, uh, the safety shields there and then after each and every use, um, everyone is, is cleaning the, uh, the equipment that has been touched. Um, so contact, it's, and we've actually found a really good response from our guests being able to uh, use the contactless uh, payment solutions, especially the QR menus. Uh, they really love that. And so we're looking to see how we can expand that and it's really helped reduce the friction point. Next slide, please. Another area, um, and this, this slide is a little full, but one area we felt that was uh, very uh, big for us to focus on was, you know, in our overall guest relations, obviously uh, people are going to be frustrated. People are scared or stressed out. Um, just when they get out, they have they've been locked in their homes. People are going to, you know, be, you know, a little bit amped up. So we trying to give a lot of uh, coaching here to our teams, how to, to talk to our guests and handle our guests and just be good listeners. Um, and acknowledge, you know, acknowledge how uh, the guest is feeling, you know, make sure we listen and then make sure that we're really understanding what they're asking for. And if it means that we, you know, we toss them a, an extra little bit of a game card or we, we listen to them a little bit longer than normal or whatever it might be, it went, you know, this goes a long, long way. And so from, from our general managers uh, and our leadership teams all the way down through our hourly teams, everyone who has guest interaction, we've really focused a lot on here and really interacting with our guests. And, and for the most part, um, this, is, this, is really, this has really served us well. Um, we've had a, quite a few guests come in and actually challenge us on, you know, in, in one location, the guest walked in and say, I want to come in here with my family of five. Tell me why I should come in here. What are you doing to keep me safe? And so our general manager, who's positioned at the front door, um, was, was the receiver of the question and, and explained everything that we're doing between the sanitization. I walked him through the location and the social distancing. And we have sticks in the locations that are exactly six feet so people can see if they challenge us on the, on the six foot marker and they see all the signage. And right when you walk into our locations, it, there's just signs everywhere. Um, and it's not so much noise that they don't get the point, but they see it and they see that we've, we're taking these, these uh, uh, steps very, very seriously. And as Elizabeth mentioned too, with the clean team, I mean, that was the best 10 bucks I ever spent was on those yellow vests for our clean team. People see those folks walking around um, cleaning games and doing this. Um, it, the, the message gets sent loud and clear. So after we walked this particular guest through the um, through all the steps and the protocols and actually saw things that it wasn't staged, they actually physically saw it themselves. Um, they came in, they played, they spent a couple hours, and when they left, they grabbed the general manager and said, you know what, you guys nailed it. This was really, really awesome. We're going to tell everybody, thank you for sharing and spending the time with me going through all of that. So that's a, I think that's going to be a big area, I think, uh, and I could recommend that is uh, when you get set to reopen or if you are in the throes of reopening, um, you're, you, may, you may get a lot of this, and we have found this to be very useful. Next slide, please. Again, guest confidence, really, um, as I spoke to there, just you know, if, if the guests can see that you're taking it seriously and you know, what you're doing to uh, take preventative measures and following guidelines, and we've all been pummeled with it, 
um, I think it goes a long, long way. So, um, you know, our guest expectations in the left slide there, you can see it's a little bit far, but there's signs right as you approach. Uh, the blue sign up front is a, you know, sanitizer station. And then as you get to the, to the front doors there, um, those yellow stop signs of the expectations of, you know, what you need to do to enter the building are right there. So you can't miss them, even though a few people do. Uh, and we have more of those on the inside. And then the next slide to its right, when you walk in, you see the front entry area um, with the hand sanitizer station and it sets all the expectations right up front. Um, adjusting our operations, you know, we went to a limited menu to reduce waste, went to a zero waste menu and, and uh, got down to um, less hours. We froze all of our hiring, uh, all raises, bonus programs, et cetera. Everything has been, has been halted. Uh, we're really putting a lot of pressure on inventories uh, to make sure we're running those down before we had them and keep, keep, uh, keep cash in the bank, not on the shelves. Um, our game spacing, our traction spacing, you know, where we can move things, uh, we move them. Um, in some places and some things, we just had to shut off readers and have spacing between uh, the, um, the games. Uh, spending is, is only essential spending and uh, emergency CapEx spending only. Um, and then we really phased in the return of our management teams and in one of our facilities that's open, it's strictly our management team right now that's operating because that's what volume warrants. And then, as you know, we've been doing a lot of esports, as Pete mentioned, uh, we moved all of our esports online uh, because esports rooms are generally confined. So we've done a lot of social distancing and spacing there and we've moved those tournaments online. Next slide, please. Our vendors, um, as earlier noted, we're having all of our vendors uh, uh, sign the uh, health declaration log. Uh, we've expanded delivery windows. You know, we tried to get things only in the morning between seven and noon before we opened up for business so we could focus on our guests and not on deliveries. So we tried to open those up so we didn't have too many things coming at, at one time. Um, contactless ordering and receiving where we can. Um, we really limit the time that folks are in the venue. They, we, we get them to come in, drop and go. Um, when stuff does come in, we immediately unpack it and, and discard all the packaging out there. Um, and in some cases, we wipe things down uh, after it's removed from the packaging. And then the big one here is really big open lines of communication with landlords and vendors. Um, we're probably all struggling these things and, you know, people are all screaming for money and, you know, rent is out there. That's a huge part of our operating expenses. And so uh, I think we've been talking to our uh, landlords every other week. Uh, just open dialogue, even if there's really nothing to talk about, it's just kind of a connection. Or if nothing's happened, we really have kept a lot of open line of communication with all of our vendors, um, and specifically landlords, which has been instrumental in, in a lot of success that we've had thus far. Next slide, please. You know, adjusting the road ahead, um, we're trying to stay as optimistic as we can, but we're, we're also being realistic about what, what's happening and what's out there. And, you know, our industry is going to change and we recognize that. So we're trying to find out new ways how we can be, you know, come out of this stronger, better. Um, how can we learn from, from some of this? How can we learn to do with some of the things we haven't done without for the past three months? Um, and try and, you know, see what the new normal looks like and try and make a new normal. And, you know, one of the things I, I love about our business and our industry is, you know, we're faced with lots of adversity. But our group and our, you know, these FEC operators, we seem to thrive on that, rise from it. Um, it may be painful, but we, there's always some good learnings that come out of these. So, you know, really just looking at uh, what the road ahead looks like, you know, managing our resources, specifically uh, financial resources to make sure that we have the appropriate runway. And then, you know, what, what else can we do to adapt to, um, to, to survive this and, and weather the storm? Next slide, please. One of the other things that we have kind of in the hopper is an emergency plan. Uh, for if, some, if something is reported, uh, we actually, on the onset of this back in early March, we actually did have this happen to us. Um, and so from there, we developed a communication tree on uh, you know, who gets called in the organization. You know, are you shutting down your facility? A written action plan that everyone knows where it is and what to do and what happens. You know, your quarantine and your work policy for, for uh, any teammates uh, that, may, uh, that may have reported or, or guests. Um, you know, uh, I highly encourage self-reporting to agencies. It just builds that bond and that trust in your local community. You know, have a public relations person ready um, to, to issue statements if you need it. It's, it's not something that we can just, you know, ostrich and, and, 
turn away from, we're going to have to have that kind of ready in the bag. And then your, your, your cleaning and sanitizing plan, then your plan to reopen. So we have this in the bag and the hopper is ready to go. So if it does happen, uh, like I said, in early March, we did have someone that claimed they got COVID um, at a GameWorks location. Um, it turned out that it was somebody was just kidding and they were just joking around. It wasn't a very funny joke, but it caused a lot of grief and a lot of lost revenue. But, um, you know, it, it, it potentially may happen in, in your location. So I highly encourage having an emergency plan ready. Next slide, please. And as we come to the end here, you know, this, this is something that we have uh, never experienced before. And um, Elizabeth mentioned as well, being flexible and being fluid with each day that comes along, thinking outside of the box. Um, I think these are all um, things that we need to do on a daily basis. And we're learning something new every day. And, and I know uh, in our organization, there's lots of dialogue and, you know, there's lots of uh, socialization of different topics that goes around each and every day of, what can we do better? Did we think about this the right way? Um, how, are, how are our guests reacting? What can we do to, to help create a new normal for our guests and our business? Um, so really think outside of the box, be flexible and be as fluid as you can as, as, and, and kind of got to roll with the punches. And I think that comes to the end. Thanks so much, Darren. I really appreciate it. That was really informative, uh, a great presentation. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's encouraging to hear from two responsible FEC owner operators um, taking this as seriously as they are. Uh, it, that, that I've heard that from so many other FEC owner operators that I've uh, had the pleasure of communicating with over this pandemic. And, um, you know, we need to get that message out. We need to let people know uh, in positions of authority that, you know, we're, we're taking all the precautions within our community to ensure that our guests and team members come back safe. Um, I've got a few questions for you from the panel, uh, from the, uh, the audience. One from Rick Kirby, um, and you both answered it regarding uh, the good reactions you're getting from the guests, and that's wonderful to hear. I'm glad to see that there's this, they're, they're seeing what you're doing and they're po reacting positively to it. Um, Elizabeth, have you had any constructive criticism that's had you alter what you're doing? Any, any complaints or problems with, uh, you know, from guests that have been mentioned to you? Um, I can't say. I will tell you, week one of opening, we had one complaint, one, and um, we'll take it. Basically, uh, a guest came in and said, we're too compulsive about cleaning, and it was, it was frustrating to her. So we'll, we'll take that one, absolutely. Um, <laughs> but no, I mean, the people that want to come out at this stage want to do something fun, and we're offering a safe environment for them to do it. So they're happy. Yeah, you're erring on the side of caution. I'll take that every time. Darren, how about you? Yeah, absolutely. Very much the same. We, you know, m most of our pushback has been on the face masks, to be, believe it or not. And, and we've just, you know, politely invited them to, to come back or go play elsewhere. And it's just, it is what it is. And we, you know, um, we explain why we're doing it and that, you know, it's just, it's just, we're, we're trying to be the best corporate citizen that we can be and make a safe environment for, for all of our guests and our teammates. It's, right. it's also our teammates. And, and we explain that. And usually when we get to that compassion and that we're trying to look after our team and also make them feel comfortable, most people generally understand and they're like, okay, I'll go get my mask or buy one and, and, and carry on. So, so far, so good. Knock wood. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Elizabeth, back to you. With regard to reopening, you had to have some expectations on what the level of business was going to be as you went through the various stages. Um, have there been any surprises? Have you met your expectations, not met your expectations, exceeded your expectations? How has that level of business, knowing it was going to be less because you're restricted by occupancy levels and social distancing and so forth, has it occurred as you would have expected? Um. Well, I don't think anything is what we expect right now, right? So, <laughs> um, but I will say that, you know, we knew that it could be a slow start. And I think that's why we, we open slowly, right? Just having a few attractions at a time. Um, and then when we found that those were doing well, people actually came and they said, well, I want to play arcade. I want to do laser tag. I want to do more. So then we said, okay, we'll, we'll open more. Um, so honestly, I think we're all surprised here by our attendance. We thought it would be much slower than this. Um, and so we're adapting to it and we're welcoming it. So 
and I imagine that creates some staffing problems because you need to, you know, staff according to what the, the guest levels are. And perhaps that's why you went about uh, opening um, kind of slowly so you could see what that was, uh, a fewer hours during the day and so forth to get that, that, that growing in the right, at the right speed. Right. We even open limited days. So we were only open five days and eight hour shifts. And yeah. that was so that we could have one, you know, our essential team members starting out. And then now that we've expanded to all days and more shifts, um, our next step would probably be opening more hours. Yeah. So even right now, we're still only open an eight hour shift each day. Um, but now with the, with the growth and more people coming, we can possibly expand our weekend hours as well. Yeah. Um, but you're right. It, it's, you know, getting that ready. Yeah. Darren, how about you? Um, uh, ha has the level of business met your, you know, adjusted expectations? Uh, any, anything, you know, any, any pleasant surprises or things that just, you know, you were like, oh, we got more work to do that people aren't ready to come back yet. It, it's met, so we modeled out what we thought it was going to be, and it's kind of been right on point with that, which has been which has been good. Uh, um, and I think it, I'd earlier mentioned uh, when we were chatting that uh, we've had seen some pretty good incremental growth, not huge leaps and bounds week over week. Uh, we opened our Las Vegas property on uh, J June 10th, and then Minneapolis and the Mall of America was the um, was three days later on the Friday. Um, so we've seen marginal incremental growth, which has been good. Uh, Vegas is really showing some really good signs of, of ramping up a little bit quicker. Uh, the, the mall is a little bit slower, but right now it's kind of, it's pacing where we want it to be. Obviously we want more, um, but we're, we're doing what we can to, uh, drive, you know, some, some door buster promotions and really we're focusing just getting people through the door and whatever it takes to get them in. Yeah, speaking of promotions, uh, Elizabeth, did you reset any pricing structures? Uh, and if you did, how did you guys react to them? So we actually didn't offer any promotions at opening. Um, again, limited staff and more work on our end. So right. we actually kind of raised some pricing mm. here. Yeah, small, but necessary. Um, we needed to maximize being that we were opening this large FEC with a limited capacity, we needed to maximize what we could from our guests, honestly. So um, we raised the pricing a little bit incrementally and no complaints. Um, they are now asking, do you guys have any specials or promotions? So I'm, I'm preparing some packages for weekdays, uh, but I think we'll allow it only during the week, which is historically a slower time anyways for us. Um, okay. Yeah, limited. Mm -hmm. Darren, uh, yourself, have you done any uh, uh, resetting of pricings? Uh, yeah, we adjusted a couple of things on our eSports lounges to be a little bit more fluid with some of our other uh, pricing structures. So we dropped the price actually from uh, $15 all day pass down to 10. Uh, we did for our loyalty members put out a, um, which, is, which is Game Perks, we did a 500 hours of gameplay and 200 credits for 50 bucks for our loyalty members to kind of give them that oomph to come in through the door. Um, we kind of re we're relaunching our Groupons in certain marketplaces where we're opening up. Um, other than that, we kept all of our food and beverage offerings the same. Um, our hours are limited. So um, and our, our, I think our regular weekly daily deals were also also aggressive enough already. So I think those were the only things that we did in terms of pricing and, and the guests have been reacting quite well to them. Got it. Um, Elizabeth, back to you. With regard to uh, dwell time and regard to uh, per cap spending, have you been tracking that? And what, what direction have you seen those going in with the guests? Um, so our, the dwell time, not so much, but the per cap spending, absolutely. We've seen that go up. Um, but I think it's because of that redirection at the front. You know, this park, you could, there's no gate. Right? So you could enter the park and you can choose your activities and you basically pay to play. Um, but now with that redirection where it takes you right to the kiosk and almost pushes you to make a purchase before entering the park, and then we find our per cap going up. So it's not a bad thing. No, no, not at all. It's almost uh, um, a pay to enter uh, program without, you know, putting okay. it out lately. Right, right. Fair and it, it's, 
I like that. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, How about yourself, Derek? Uh, uh, have you been tracking dwell time or per cap spending? Yes. So our spending, our spending is generally on the rise. Um, a lot of our teammates have been uh, really good about, uh, you know, saying, you know, how are you going to play today? Would you like that $40 card today? So they're really trying to upsell the bigger game card and those types of yeah. things. Dwell time when we first opened was people were in and out. Yeah. And now what we're seeing is they're lingering a little bit longer. And then if you break it out into demographics, what we're seeing is uh, parents, specifically dads and their kids are staying a long time. Mm. Um, when mom's around or if it's young teens um, or, or individuals, um, they're kind of spending, you know, regular amount of time on there and kind of getting in and out and, and, and doing their things. So we're watching that very, very closely. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I appreciate you guys joining us today. It's been a really informative session. Um, again, I can't thank you enough for what you're doing to help us all look better uh, as an industry. Um, I love the fact that you're getting uh, news reports in the local press and so forth. Um, talking about, hey, come on out and see what these guys are up to. They're, they're really taking this seriously. And I think as a, as a community, uh, pretty much across the board, that's what I'm present to. I'm really pleased with the, um, the diligence that our community is, uh, is attaching to this. So with that, we're going to close this. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining us. I particularly want to thank uh, my team members, Tina Schwartz and Alex Reichstor. You don't see them on these webinars, but trust me, they do, they, they do everything they can to make us look good. So if you enjoy these, they're the reason why. I would like to point something out. In the coming days, we'll be releasing a, pu a public service announcement that FEC owner operators, and for that matter, game manufacturers, would, able to, it would be able to incorporate within their in-house video or on-screen video. And it simply reinforces the messages you're hearing here. Wash your hands, wear a mask, keep your social distance. If you're sick, stay home. Um, so look for that in the coming days. This will be something that you'll be able to access off of our website. We'll put it out on social media. If you weren't able to find it, send us an email. We'll be happy to uh, get you a copy of it. But look for that over the next couple of days. We're just making some final edits uh, to it and uh, perhaps maybe as early as today. Um, we haven't got a webinar schedule for next week because it's the 4th of July holiday. So I want to wish everyone a very happy holiday. Happens to be my 40th wedding anniversary. Uh, uh, Congratulations. On... Oh, there you go. I to be a, be a good boy and make sure I get something nice for my beautiful wife. So once again, thanks, everyone. We'll take, catch you next time. Have a safe, enjoyable 4th of July, and let's continue to reopen safely. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.